Welcome to Math Enrollment Video C. I'm Kevin Wartman, the Director of Undergraduate Studies in the Department of Mathematics at the University of Utah. What we're going to do in this video is I think we're going to see four problems, one at a time. Uh, I'll show you a problem and then ask you to pause the video and work on a solution with pen and paper, but without anything else, without a computer, without a calculator, without your phone, without help from another person, without books or notes. And I'm going to ask you to work on the solutions that way because your math instructors in certain courses are going to expect you to be able to solve these problems uh, without those, those tools. So we're going to do one problem at a time. I'll show you the problem. You'll put it on pause. You'll work on a solution. You'll unpause it. I'll come back. We'll talk about the solution together. After we finish talking about all the solutions to all the problems, we'll talk about how it went and what that might mean for your enrollment choices in a math course. Let's go ahead and begin. The first problem is f of x is x squared plus 5x plus 2, and g of x is x plus 3. Find and simplify f of g of x. Go ahead, press pause here, work it out, and when you're done, um, go ahead and come back. Welcome back. f of g of x. Well. We know what f of x is, that's at the top of the screen. And so the first part of this problem is just to recognize that rather than putting x in the place uh, where you're told to with the formula for f, you're gonna put x plus three in that place. So go ahead and look at what f is telling you. And rather than thinking of what f is telling you for x, think of what f is telling you for a red blob. It's like put red blob in, you'll square the red blob, you'll multiply it by five. Uh, you'll add those things together. You'll also add two. That's what we're going to do down below. Uh, this time the red blob is x plus three. f of x plus three is x plus three squared plus five times x plus three, and then you're going to add two. x plus three squared, you can multiply that out, use FOIL or any other technique that you're comfortable with, and you'll find that it's x squared plus six x plus nine. 5 times x plus 3, use the distributive law there, you'll get 5x plus 15, and 2 is just 2. So that's the first step of this problem. That's what f of g of x is. Now we want to regroup terms and just simplify it a little bit. Uh, x squared is just x squared, but 6x and 5x, you can combine those to make 11x. 9 plus 15 plus 2 is 26. So that is our simplified answer. f of g of x is x squared plus 11x plus 26. Let's move on to problem number two. Solve for x if x to the fourth minus 4x squared is greater than zero. I'll give you a moment to work on that, press pause, and then come back. Welcome back. Uh, there's a couple ways to solve this problem. I'm just going to solve it by doing a little bit more than what was asked for. I'm actually going to graph the function x to the fourth minus 4x squared. And from its graph, we'll see a solution. So you don't have to graph it. That's not what was being asked for, but that's certainly a way that you can solve it. Uh, that's the way I'll proceed here. x to the fourth minus 4x squared, you can factor out an x squared. And that is x squared times the difference of x squared and 4. Well, what are the roots of that? When does that equal 0? Well, it equals 0 either when x squared is 0, that is, if x is 0, or when x squared minus 4 is 0. That is either x is 2 or x is minus 2. Those are the three roots of this polynomial, x to the fourth minus 4x squared. And a root in terms of a graph corresponds to an x-intercept. So here are the three x-intercepts for this graph. There's one at minus 2, one at 0, and one at 2. Uh, looking at this polynomial a little bit uh, more closely, you see the leading term is x to the fourth. 4 is even, so this is an even degree. Uh, the coefficient in front of the x fourth is like an invisible plus one. It's really plus one times x to the fourth. Well, plus one's positive. So if you have a positive coefficient, uh, an even degree, in this case, degree four polynomials, your leading coefficient, then you know that to the left and to the right of your picture, the graph is going to be going up. And so I've just sketched that here. The graph is going up as you move right of two and left of minus two. Well, that's what's happening to the left of minus two and to the right of two. What's happening in the middle in between minus two and two? Let's just pick a couple points and figure it out. So I picked minus one and one on the x-axis. Let's see what happens there. If x is one, you'll have one to the fourth minus four times one squared. That's minus three. If x is minus one, you'll have minus one to the fourth 
minus four times the square of negative one, that's also minus three. So for this polynomial, x to the fourth minus four x squared, if you input one, out comes minus three. If you input minus one, out comes minus three. And that means one minus three and minus one minus three are both points of your graph. From here, we can sort of just sketch in sort of any reasonable looking thing in the middle and that'll do well enough uh, for the graph of x to the fourth minus four x squared. Um, looks like there's some notes that made it in the top right corner. Uh, you can ignore those. Uh, uh, they don't influence this problem in any way. Uh, looking at this graph, we are trying to figure out when x to the fourth minus four x squared is greater than zero. Well, it's greater than zero when the graph is above the x-axis. And that happens to the left of minus two and to the right of two. That is x to the fourth minus four x squared is greater than zero exactly when either x is less than negative two or x is greater than two. So that what's written at the bottom of the screen towards the right, that is the final answer for this problem that is solving for x. We know that x is less than negative two or greater than two. Problem number three, I think. Maybe I've lost count. Anyways, what is the domain of x minus one times x to the two fifths all divided by x squared minus one? Go ahead, find out what the domain is. Uh, put this on pause while you work that out, then unpause it, come back and we'll talk about the solution. Welcome back. Uh, to find the domain of a function, you're really being asked for all numbers for which that function kind of makes sense. So when does it make sense to write the expression that's at the top of our screen and that's rather complicated fraction? When does that make sense? Well, when does it make sense to take a fifth root? When can you take a fifth root of a number? Well, you can always do that. You can always square a number. There's no problem with that. You can always subtract one from a number. That's okay. You can always multiply two numbers together. You can always square a number. You can always subtract one from a number. However, you can't always divide by any number. You can't ever divide by zero. And so that's the problem here. Our domain's gonna be anything except when we're dividing by zero. That is except when x squared minus one is zero. So the domain is all real numbers x except when x squared minus one is zero because that would mean that we would have to divide by zero and we simply can't do that. So that's the first step in the answer. The second step is just to, is just to simplify a little bit for what x is. If x squared minus one is zero, that means x squared is one. And if x squared is one, then x is plus or minus one. So any number x makes sense in the expression at the top of the page or at the top of the screen, except when x is one or x is minus one. In either of those cases, it would result in division by zero, which is never allowed. And so that is the domain, all x's except when x is one and x is minus one, that's the answer. Let's move on to another problem. Let's find an equation. And you see the word there is an, not the, because there's actually could be several answers to this. So we'll just talk about one possible answer. Find an equation for the line that passes through the points one, two, and the point seven minus three in the xy plane. Like I said, there's a, there's a couple different, there's actually many different answers to this. And there's a couple different standard ways to find an answer. We'll just talk about one of them and I'll uh, let you work that out here. Press pause and when you're done, come back, we'll talk about the answer. Welcome back. I've drawn an x-axis, a y-axis, and the two points of interest, one, two, and seven minus three. We want to find the equation for the line that passes through those two points. And like I said, there's a couple different ways to do this. One way is you can start by finding the slope of this line. To go from one, two to seven minus three means dropping five and moving over six. Because you've dropped five and moved over six, that means the slope of this line is minus five, six. And I could use the, uh, what's called slope intercept form to write, to, to begin to write down the equation for this line. Y equals the slope minus five, six, times x plus b. And that's a pretty good start uh, because our equation is gonna have a y and an x in it. We don't really want that b there. We wanna replace b with a precise number. So now we wanna figure out what b is. So we need to, one way we can do this is we can take a point on the line. I like the point one, two. So x coordinate one, y coordinate two, and we can throw that into the equation that we've already started setting up. If x is one and y is two, 
then we'll have two equals minus five, six times one plus B. And well, minus five, six times one is of course just minus five, six. We'll add five, six. We'll change two into 12, six. And that means that B is 12 plus five, six. It's 17, six. And that's what B is. Right, so now we solve for B, we'll go back up to the top line in that column where we have uh, our first beginnings of the equation, y equals minus five, six, x plus B. And we know that B is 17, six, so we'll just swap out B and this is our final answer then. Y equals minus five, six times x plus 17, six. Uh, if you have a slightly different equation, you can check probably that it's equivalent to this one. Um, and that is, the solution to this problem. Let's go ahead and look now at the array of common entry level courses in our math department for students to take. Uh, hopefully you watched the overview enrollment video that, that went through a little bit about what these courses were and how they were arranged. If you watched video B and you were confident and comfortable with your solutions there, then we said at that time that these, this, the, the courses that are on the screen at this moment would be good courses for you to enroll in. 1030, 1090, 1050, 1040, 1070, 1080. Those would be good courses to enroll in. And if you watch this video, video C, and you didn't feel all that comfortable with your solutions or these problems, then we still recommend that these would be excellent courses for you to enroll in. And which course you want to enroll in is gonna depend on what you wanna get out of your math courses. Is it gen ed requirements or is it progressing to some other course or is it satisfying some requirement in your major? Uh, those are questions for sort of outside this video. What do you want out of your math classes? But any of these classes would be an excellent option. If video B went well and also, well, regardless of what, whether video B went well, if this video went well for you. That is, if you went over these problems and you were able to do these problems correctly and they felt comfortable to you, then any course that's on the screen here would be good. And the two courses, sorry, the three courses that have been added over the previous screen are Math 1060, Math 1100, and Math 1215. Um, those are, well, a trigonometry course and two calculus courses that don't require prior knowledge of trigonometry. It might also be that your trigonometry is comfortable, in which case there are other calculus courses that you can enroll in. And to figure that out, we'll have you watch video D. I'll see you there.